Hey there, Bob Hughes here with JD Squared. Hope you're having a great day. Hey, this is a video in the series dealing with Camelot Rotary. That's our rotary cutting and bending software. And specifically, I'm going to be talking about grids and how they're used. Now, before you go, oh my God, grids, how boring does it get? They're actually pretty cool. They're going to allow you to create very complex structures relatively easily. And um, I think once you see where the power is in them, you'll, you'll start using them a little bit more. Anyway, let me put my reading glasses on so I can see the screen, and let's get after it. Let's start by going ahead and clicking the Create Frame button right here. Grids will only be displayed when you're either creating geometry or structures or you're editing those structures. Now, you can actually see the grid right here, this checkerboard pattern. That's what we're referring to as the grid. If you notice, it's on a flat plane, and they're called planes. Grids are drawn onto planes, and you can kind of think of a plane as any flat surface, and you can orientate this anywhere in space that you desire. Now, before we go too much further, let's talk about what these indicators are right here. This is a universal um, coordinate system indicator. And what it's showing you is the direction of the X, Y, and Z axes. Now, the universal one, the, one, the large one here with the big thick arrows, has nothing to do with your geometry. It is nothing more than a visual indicator so you know which way is up, down, left, right, fore, and aft. Now, however, the one over here, the smaller one that's actually drawn at an intersection of one of the of the four of the squares, that is called the grid's origin, and it does matter. That's how the grid is orientated um, from your with your geometry. And we're going to explain that to you here in a second. All right, so that's pretty much it. We know that a grid is overlaid onto a plane. Now let's go ahead and we'll open up the grid ribbon bar and we'll go through the items. Okay, as I mentioned, grids are only visible during add, adding or creating structures and editing those structures. So let's start by creating a frame from scratch right here. I selected the Create Frame button. There you go. Now, if you notice, there's the grid right there. Easy peasy. It's pretty much in the default location of where Camelot's going to assign it, and that's going to be at Z0, call that the floor, and then X and Y0. So just picture you're standing right there. Anyway, that's our grid. Now, let's go ahead and add a tube to it real quick. Now, there's two ways to um, draw structures or edit structures in Camelot. One of them is direct point input. In other words, you're going to tell Camelot, this is where I'm going, the actual coordinates, or this is where I want you to go relative to where I'm at. That's the uh, point entry method. Now, another method is using grids, which happens to be the subject of this video. Let's go ahead and start off with the first method first. We're going to add a point. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, now we started off at 0, 0, 0 right here. That's um, what the default origin of the grid that Camelot will assign. Because you've got to start with somewhere. You can't just start off in the middle of open space. We added a point. And for this particular example, let's just say we want to go from the floor and we want to go up 24 inches straight up. So there you go. Now, if I was to continue adding points like this, I could say add a point. Now I want you to go relative from where I'm at. I want you to go to the right, down the x-axis, 8 inches. But I also want you to go up to 36 inches. And you can see we're kind of starting a roll bar right here. Now, this is the direct point coordinate input system in Camelot. You don't have to use this, however. You could use grids to help you. Now, imagine, for instance, if you were at the top of this point right here, and you wanted to start drawing directly um, normal to this tube, it would be almost impossible to mathematically calculate where these points are at, and that's where grids are going to come in and save the day. Now, another thing I should mention real quick, as I just added points right here, you probably noticed there's absolute means I'm telling you I want you to actually put a point right here, X, Y, and Z. Relative, I want you to put it this distance from where I'm at. Anyway, this whole section right here is the subject of another video talking about absolute versus relative. Please watch that. That'll help a lot. Now, during this video, I'm going to be giving you hints 
um, you're going to see what I'm doing. You probably pick up the idea just by watching this video. But keep in mind, there is another video that does that. All right, first thing we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and hit Control-Z a couple times. And we're going to back out of here. Now, I'm going to completely back out of the Add Tube Editor, which will bring us back to this screen here. Now, we have a structure here with one tube in it. If I select Add New Tube, I am adding a tube to the assembly. I'm not modifying this tube. I'm adding a new one. But if I did want to modify this tube, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to Edit Frame with Points Input. And there we go. Notice it brought in, um, since I have this selected, it brought in those points. Now, in order to utilize the grid, um, when you're in the tube editing mode, all you need to do is select the grid tab right here, and that will bring up the grid ribbon bar. Let's go ahead first and take a look at the bottom of the viewport right here where you can see snap to vertex and snap to grid. So let's see what they do. All right, I'm going to go ahead and select isometric view. Here's the problem you run into. <clears throat> With the grid set, let's just go back to add tube, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a new tube, okay, so I could demonstrate um, what could possibly happen. Now, if I tell Camelot that I want you to drive it by another point, what I'm really saying is drive it by an intersection of the grid elements, anywhere where the, the lines cross, or a point on the structure. Now, a point on the structure is called a vertex. It takes two vertexes, we put a segment in between them, connect them, and then we assign a profile to it, and that's how we end up with your tubing shape, right? So, if I was going to say, I want this tube driven from another point, let's just say the top of this one here, then I could select that. Now, as I move off, I go ahead and I add a point, and I say I want it driven also. Now, notice I'm selecting the grid too, or I can select the vertex itself. Now, that may not be what you want to do. For instance, if I'm looking at it from a top view right here, well, if I move my mouse to here, am I selecting the vertex or am I selecting the intersection of a grid? It's very, very hard to tell. So in order to solve that problem, we have given you the option of turning off uh, the snap. So we could turn off snap to vertex, for instance. Let me move this up a little bit so you can see a little bit better. And all I did, I held down the left mouse button. If you notice here, I can select here, and I selected that grid point, right? Let's get back out. Let's hit Control z to get back out of it. Now, if I come along and say driven, I could select the end of the vertex or here. Once again, if I have it, orientated this way, it's going to be very hard to tell which one we're selecting. But if I turn off snap to grid, notice now as I move my mouse around, we're not snapping to the grid. There's no red circles, but it will snap to the end of the vertex. So if I do that and I rotate it so you can see it better, you can see where I'm at. I've just assigned this point to the end of that tube. Now, if I want to add a point, now I can't really use the grid, right? Um, first of all, i got to select driven by point anyway, but you don't see me being able to select grid because we turned it off. Now, if I was to turn on snap to grid, now you see it come back. And as, as a consequence, I could also turn off snap to vertex so that if I wanted to select this point here, which could have been one of two points, could have been a vertex, could have been an intersection on the grid, I know now that I am snapping to the grid. So if I come along here and I select this point, we're going to draw a tube from here to here. Now, notice down here the coordinates right here. What these coordinates are telling you is the distance from the grid's origin over to wherever you happen to be. So like right here, for instance, look right here. If I go there, I'm over 12 inches on the x-axis and I'm up 12 inches on the y-axis. So this will give you a very good indicator how far you've moved because with a complex grid, relatively fine resolution grid, <clears throat> good luck trying to look at the screen and figure it out. So we've helped you out right there. We're telling you how far away you have moved. Okie dokie. That'll take care of this section right here. Now, in order to use the grid functionality, because let's face it, what good is a grid going to do you if it's just a floor? It's never moved anywhere else. It's not really going to do you a whole lot of good. So in order to show you those functions, let's move on to the next part. 
Okay, now we're going to start using the grids. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to select the grid tab up here and that will open up the grid ribbon bar here. Um, and you can see our grid right there, our default grid. Now we're going to bounce around this ribbon bar a little bit, but let's start off right here with the X size and the Y size. First of all, notice that to the right of some of these numeric input boxes, there is a unit selector. So you could select, do I want to work in millimeters, meters, inches, feet? So anytime you see that, like right over here, you could select those units. So for instance, if I went to millimeter, it automatically converts it to millimeters from inches to millimeters. And it'll do it vice versa also. Well, what we've got here on the grid side is nothing more than a visual representation of the size of the grid. It has nothing to do with your geometry. So if you're doing a very large structure, let's say you're designing a crane boom or something and the thing's 200 feet long, well then you may wanna make your grid 100 feet by 100 feet or 150 by 150 just to visually see what's going on better. It's not doing anything with the geometry, it's just what you can visually see. Also, conversely or inversely, if you've got a um, small item that you're designing, you may want the grid visually smaller. So that's all this is doing right here. So for instance, if I was to make the grid 100 by 100, you could see where it got quite a bit smaller. And that's all that does there. Now, to the right of it here, we have grid step. Now this is an important feature because remember I was showing you the snap too as we moved around the screen. This is what is setting the size of the grid, the size of the, of the squares or rectangles. So for instance, I could go here on the X step, which is the X axis, change that to a two, and you can see I've altered the grid. So now that as I'm snapping, it's gonna be snapping two inch intervals on the X axis, but six inch intervals on the Y axis. So if we were to go to there, now we have a more uniform grid. And you can see a little bit too what I was talking about later on if you're snapping to points where it just becomes more difficult to select either the grid or the vertex. That's why we put that down there. All right, so that's those two functions right there. Now to the right of it, we have the visibility section. If you were to unselect the grid visible, the grid disappears. But not only does it disappear, it ceases to function. So if I was to go over here to tube, add a new tube, let's go ahead and say that it's driven by a point. Notice I can move all over the place. I'm not getting any snap to grid, but I can select the vertex because we have snap the vertex selected down here. So let's go back to the grid. Anyway, um, you can also make the axis indicator invisible by selecting or deselecting that checkbox right there, and you end up with just basically nothing but the tube. Typically, you're going to have those all checked on. I just wanted to show you what's going on right there. Okay, let's move over to the next section, and this is where it starts getting interesting. Let's start with what are planes right here, the three predefined planes. We have plane X, Y, plane Y, Z, and plane Z, X. And all it means is plane X, Y has been orientated so that it's laying flat across the X and the Y axes. If we were, and you can look at that as your uh, top view down uh, the floor, whatever, however you want to look at it. Now, if we pick the Y, Z plane, you can see where the, the plane and the grid is now aligned with the z-axis and the y-axis. And lastly, if we click uh, plane zx, we end up with it on the front view or what we call the front view. And if you go over here to the little view icons, you'll see where it says front view. If we click on that, you can see where you're clearly able to draw straight on the grid from the front view. So that's your three different planes right there. Now, Go ahead and reset back to plane X, Y. Now, important thing to, or concept is that there are different axis indicators, and specifically there's three of them in Camelot. One of them is the world system. This is nothing more than your visual indicator of how the world system is working, the X, Y, and Z, like the whole entire structure, how it's doing. Then you have the part or the construction where you started, and it actually has a location. It's There's a point 
where that's going to be and it was set at zero 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 now you have a third one and the third one will be the grid origin so let me show you a feature in camelot right here and we're going to select a grid origin because right now the grid origin is right here on top of the part origin right this time we're going to go ahead and select grid origin when i do that once again i could snap to a grid because i've got that selected and i could snap to a vertex we're going to select snap to vertex so if we do that notice we have another indicator system right there and we have risen up 24 inches so the new origin is 24 inches now not only can I select a point to move the origin, I could also enter its value specifically. So if I wanted to say I want the origin up um, 36 inches here, look what's happened. We are now 36 inches above it. And that would be useful if you were drawing on that plane, or that 36 inch tall plane, and you didn't care about any existing geometry. You just wanted to draw on that plane. Well, go ahead and move the grid up to 36 inches. Now, Hitting the reset grid origin button essentially puts everything back to where it was before you changed it. All right, so that describes the origin, the input, the three inputs, and how to select it and how to select the plane. Now let's move on to the next section, grid offsets. Okay, I think the best way to show you offsets is to give you a couple of different examples. We're going to start off with a very basic one first. And remember we had set our grid up earlier to a certain height. Let's go over here and reset the grid back to the origin, reset the grid origin. So we're basically back to our baseline right here. Now, here's what I have in my mind we're going to create. Picture you've got a fourth floor ledge on a condominium or a hotel and it's a corner and we want to put up a corner rail on that to keep people from falling off your building and suing you so how can we do that easily in camelot and the answer is using grids now remember earlier we created this point right here or this part and we made it 30 or 24 inches tall so the first thing we're going to do for our railing is go over here and change that from 24 to 36 inches tall. That has nothing to do with grids. I'm just showing you how easy it is to alter geometry in Camelot. Now, if we go back to grids, there's two ways in this particular case we could have offset the grid. We could literally type in grid offset and type in 36 inches, and there you go. We're at 36 inches, right? Let's reset the grid offset back. The other way to do it would have been to select grid origin, then select the vertex of the part, and that too will move the grid up that far. You could do it either way, but since I'm talking about offsets, let's reset the grid origin, and let's set the offset up 36 inches so we're right here, right? Now, it's important to remember that we're going to first thing we're going to need to do is close this and we need to go to tube and we're going to edit frame with points input because we're not adding a new tube we're modifying the one tube we already have in the part so let's go to edit frame that brings up the points that we've already created there's only two of them the origin and then the upper part at 36 inches now we're going to go ahead and add a point in camelot whenever you add a point it's referencing off the point before it. So it's going to start at that point before it, and it's going to go to the point that you're defining. Now, to make this relatively easy, I want to go to top view. I want to see the top view. I see my x-axis, my y-axis. You can kind of see what's going on right there. So I select the top view icon. Now I'm going to use the mouse wheel. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to move over. And what I'm going to do is I am going to add a point. So we've already added a point. Actually, I've already clicked it. So I want it driven by point, which means I could select, since I have vertex selected or snap to grid, I'm not on top of a vertex. So I'm not worried about accidentally selecting it. So I'm on the grid, and I'm going to go over six feet. Remember down here is telling you where you're at. I want to go over 72 inches. I'm going to click it. All right. I'm going to use my mouse wheel. Every time you add a tube, Camelot will zoom in on the whole structure. Um, it does that because that's what a lot of people want. So I'm using the mouse wheel to zoom back out. Now I'm going to go ahead and add another point. 
And once again, I'm going to drive it by the grid. So I select driven by point and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to select, you know, here's 12, 24, you know, whatever. I want to select 72 inches up on the Y. I've got that. Hit the isometric view here so I can see what I'm building. Now for the last point, I'm not going to use the grid. Why would I want to do that? I'm just going to type absolutely. I want you to go back to zero. I want you to go back to floor. And there you go. That's our main rail that we've got right there. Now I can go back to the grid and I can reset the grid origins or offset back to the floor. Now that's the simple way of, of looking at grid offset. Now, let me give you an example of um, where it makes it easier to use grids to draw something than rather um, come along and um, you know try to figure out where the points are, right? Let's go ahead to the grid. This time we're gonna offset the grid six inches up from the floor. So we did that right there, right? Let's go back to our top view. And what we want to do is we want to change the grid spacing now. I want to change it to six inches by six inches. Much finer, right? Now I'm going to add a tube. I'm not modifying the existing tube here. I'm adding a new tube to the structure. So I'm going to say add tube. And what I'm going to do is I am unselecting snap the vertex because it can be very hard for me. I just want to use the grid to set our points. I do not want to accidentally snap a point on an existing part. So I've turned off snap the vertex. Let's go ahead and say we're going to drive the original point and we're going to select it from right there. We're going to add a point and we're going to slide another one and we're going to go from there. Now we're going to add another point. We're still using our grid. So we're going to be driven by point here. Notice it automatically put the bend in for us because we have make bends for new points. Let's go ahead and do this. We're going to put another one right there. And then last but not least, we're going to do one more right here. Okay. Now you want to see something cool? Let's go to ISO. Look what we just did. We created a rail easy peasy that's connecting down here. And all we would have to do is go ahead and cope, notch the tubing, which is another subject, another video very easily. We put ourselves like a little, little step rail, something a little bit different, right? But it's a fancy hotel. So we want the rail to be a little cooler than just this. So let's go back in the grid. Let's change the offset this time up to 12 inches. You can see if I roll, I've moved up to 12 inches, right? Now we'll go back to the step. We'll go back to 12 by 12. I can leave it at six by six, but we'll go back to 12 by 12. Let's go back to the top view. And this time we're gonna add a new tube. We go to tube, add tube. And we're gonna say, we snap the vertex is not selected. So we're not accidentally gonna choose an existing point on a part driven by, we're gonna select here, add a point drive it by this corner here at another point drive it by this point i'm sorry let me did i do that right let's see yeah uh, driven by and then come on now okay right there okay now we've done that let's go ahead and close it now look what we've got a little bit fancier and you know i know it's not really cool um i'm just you know showing you some of the stuff now if i did want to complete this guardrail um, what I could do, and this has nothing to do with grids, I'm just going to show you a little bit of the power of Camelot. I could go ahead and move or copy a frame. So if I select the tubes, I select this tube here, right? And now I got to select the base point. So for this, I may want to select the vertex or I may even want to type the point in. Like right now, base point is 000. zero, zero. Since I'm going up in the Z, really all I need to do is put a target point of any number I want, 36 inches and it would raise the copy to that. However, in this case, I don't want to do that. I want a six inch spacing right here, and I want three of them total, and I say apply it. All righty, and then I close my tool, and there you go. There's my, so if I apply and close right here, there's my guardrail right there. I got my little foot rest, if you want to call it that. But you could see how easy that was to do with vertexes there. All right, let's go ahead and let me show you a couple of more advanced features. And one of them is using the offsets also. So let's do that. Okay, Camelot pretty much gives you unrestricted um, ways of moving a grid or positioning that grid in space. Let's go over here to grid and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. 
Using these two panels right here, the grid origin, clearly we could set the origin anywhere in space because we could set the X, Y, and Z. But you can also rotate the grid about any of the three axes. So to give you an example of what I'm talking about, let's go ahead and make, uh, make a, simple, uh, a simple bar that's kicked up like 35 degrees on itself. Now, one thing I wanna go ahead and show you is what this panel on the left side is doing, save grids. I'm gonna go ahead and add the current grid to the saved lifts of the grids, and I'm gonna call it the basic floor. Alrighty, now this is gonna allow us to return back to a predefined grid or a grid that we have defined um, previously. Let's go ahead and add a tube to it. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna say that we are, we're gonna add a point and we're gonna go ahead and snap to the grid because we have snapped a grid down here. We're gonna select this point here and it puts our point in no problem, right? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off snap to grid and we're gonna create another plane. So we do that by going up here to grid, select grid origin, and we're gonna select this point here. Notice it, 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 in, you know, it, in, it inserted a grid origin for us. That's why you see the axis indicators right there for the grid. Let's zoom out a little bit, move over. Now what we're gonna do, if you notice, you've got X, you know, the grid is on X, Y, and Z. So if we wanted to, for instance, rotate the grid around Z, we could go here, type in 45 degrees, and you could see where the grid is now rotated. We could start drawing on those angles right there. Let's go ahead and put that back to zero. What I want to do in this particular case, though, is I actually want to kick it up 35 degrees on the x-axis. So let's go x, type in 35, and you can see that we have indeed gone up. Remember the floor is pretty much uh, the x and the y right here, so we've gone up 35 degrees. Let's go ahead over here and save this grid as 35 degrees, okay? There you go. Now, this will allow us easily to go back and forth between the two grids if we need to, if we need to modify the geometry or, or something like that. Now, let's go ahead, select our tube right here, and let's go back to tube. We're gonna edit with frame input. So we have both points defined, the start and the end point. And we're gonna go ahead and add a point. We're gonna drive it by the grid, which means I have to reselect the snap to grid. I'm gonna come up here and say, I want it to go two feet up that way, add a point, I want it to come two feet over, I'm sorry, add it this way. And then I'm gonna add another point. I'm also gonna drive by the grid, I wanna to come to here. Okay, we've got that. Now we're gonna go back to grid. We are gonna pre-select or reselect our basic floor grid. You can see we're back to the floor. Add a point, driven by the grid, and we'll put it right here. And that is pretty much what I had in mind that I was gonna do with the grids. And I was easily able to accomplish this by rotating about the different grid axes. I also showed you how to save a grid. Now, there's only one other thing here that I could see that I need to show you, and that's this last work plane um, tab over there. So to do that, we're gonna end up creating a new drawing. Alrighty, to illustrate the last um, section, this panel over here, we're gonna create another structure, and this is just a weird looking thing. Um, I've got no idea. I just need to um, illustrate to you what these functions do. I'm sure in the future, you'll probably figure out how to use it. Well, we're gonna go ahead, and we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and add a tube. We're gonna start off zero, 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 no problem, but we're gonna add a point, and this time we are going to go up Y. We're going to go up, let's just say 10 inches, you know, I'm sorry. Now let's go like, let's go 15 inches, make it a little bit easier, right? But we're going to go up to Z 20 inches. And this could be something that you just measured with a tape measure. And this is pretty much what you want to do right there. Now from this point, we've measured and we want to go ahead and let's add a point. This time we're going to move up to, let's just say, I don't know, I'm just coming up with numbers here, folks. 30 inches, 
and we're going to move over on X. We're going to move over X, eh, let's just say 18 inches, okay? <clears throat> so we've got this part right here. Now, clearly, this is kind of a, you know, weird looking part. I mean, if I even want to make it weirder, I could say that the Y goes up another six inches, and now we're truly at some weird angles. In fact, you can actually see the angles here, 59.04. But these dimensions came because they are what you measured that you want it to be. You didn't worry about what angle it was. Camelot will tell you how to bend it. You just knew you needed to go to this point. All right, now let's just say um, you want to work on this particular plane right here. You want to keep working on a flat plane because you're bending it. You want everything to lay flat. What you could do is go over select it, select the work plane, select a tube, and if you notice now, the work plane has been moved in line with your part. You could apply the angle of, you could reset the origin just like we always have. You could rotate, you could do whatever you want, but essentially you're working on a flat plane now. So if you're snapping to the grid, when this particular piece is done, it will lay flat or pretty close to flat, depending on the spring back of the tubing. Now, let's go ahead and hit um, um, Control-Z right here. Now, what we're going to want to do is, this time, I want to show you what setting the grid normal to a piece of tube looks like. Remember, we got this kind of a weird angle right here. Well, we want to go to the end of the tubing, and we want to start making bends off the end of the tubing that are perpendicular, I guess, normal to the tube. The way you would do that is select the point, go over to here. I'm sorry, let's close this out here. Select the point, go to here to select work plane normal to the tube, and you can see what it did. Now your work plane is normal to the tube. If we go back to tube, we go back into edit mode. Uh, by the way, this would be a good idea to save that particular one. So you could say maybe um, save it as normal to tube, you know, or something like that. Now you'll be able to get back to that anytime you need, but you could see right here, you can now start drawing off of that plane right there fairly easily. And once again, rotation of angles and origins and all can be, um, be adjusted, even though we've already set the origin to the end of the tube right here. Let's see here. Yeah, so you can see what's going on right there. Um, this will allow you to work on that plane. So if we were to come along and say, all right, I want to add another tube. Let's do that. And this time we're going to snap the grid. If I come over here and I, I select that right there, let's add one more tube. We're going to drive by. We're going to come up to here. <clears throat> okay, we're going to go ahead and close it. You can see where these two bends have been made normal to that tube there, even though we never knew the angle of the axis to begin with. So that's pretty much all there really is to talk about grids. Um, they're incredibly powerful. You could place a grid anywhere in space that you want by changing the origin and changing the angles. You have preset grids to help you set up and um, you can align grids with options. The best thing to do learning grids is to experiment with them. Um, anyway, I hope that helps you out right there. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to email support. Now, they'll, they'll try to get you the answer pretty quick. Once again, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a, a remainder of the day. I hope it's great for you. Goodbye.